cryptocurrencies at their core are a bunch of computers all running the same program. So the number of transactions they can handle is limited by how powerful the computers running the cryptocurrency are. Whilst they could get people to run more powerful computers, there is a limit to this. And as the computers become more expensive to run, it limits the number of people who can afford to do it, leading to centralization. In order to alleviate this issue, one method that some cryptocurrencies are turning to are layer 2 solutions, where you have a second layer on top of the protocol that will help do processing for the layer 1, so the layer 1 nodes can have less work to do. Rollups are one of these layer 2 solutions. There are many types of rollups which all have their own properties. In this video, I'll be going over the normal smart contract rollup. However, before going into how rollups work, an important prerequisite for understanding them is understanding Merkle trees. Merkle trees are simply the data structure that the state of everyone's funds and transactions are stored in. They start with all the pieces of state you want to include, like Bob owns two doge and Alice owns five doge. These pieces of state are then hashed to form what's called a leaf node. The leaf node is then hashed together with another leaf node to produce a branch node. Two branch nodes are then hashed together to form another branch node, and this keeps going until you reach the top, which is called the state root or Merkle root. This root is a hash that represents the entire state. Being able to represent the entire state of something with a single hash like this is one of the key features of Merkle trees that rollups use. The other big advantage of using this method is without having to download the entire state, you can confirm that a piece of state exists within the Merkle tree as long as you have the piece of state, a few branch nodes and the Merkle root. For example, if you had the Merkle root and someone wanted to prove that Bob owns two doge, they would only need to provide the following branch nodes alongside the piece of state that they are trying to prove. Now you can hash the piece of state to get leaf node E, hash that together with node F to get node EF, which can then be hashed with GH to get EFGH, and so on until you get to the root. If this root matches the Merkle root that you have, then you can confirm that Bob does indeed own two doge. If they tried to lie and say Bob owns three doge, the hashes would be completely different, and you would end up with a different final hash. Being able to prove a piece of state exists within a Merkle tree like this is called a Merkle proof and is the other key feature that rollups use. Now let's move on to rollups. Looking at them from the layer 1's perspective, they simply consist of a smart contract where people can send their funds. The state of the funds in the smart contract are no longer the responsibility of the layer 1 to process and will be managed by the layer 2. The way the layer 1 knows what the state of the funds are is simply from the layer 2 sending a Merkle root of the state every so often. The layer 2 is what manages the complete Merkle tree, so users interact directly with the layer 2 to make any changes to the state. However, what happens in cases where the layer 2 is not online? With the layer 1 only having the Merkle root, there isn't enough data for users to prove their funds, as they would need the branch nodes in order to create a Merkle proof. This means their funds would be stuck, as they can't prove they own them, and they would need to hope that the layer 2 comes back online. To prevent this from being an issue, when the layer 2 posts a new Merkle root, it also has to post enough data to recreate the change in the Merkle tree, so users can recreate the full Merkle tree themselves by looking back at all this data. The layer 1 nodes don't need to process this data, or recreate the Merkle tree themselves, but just make sure it's available for users who want to download it. The layer 1 smart contract will then typically have some sort of emergency function where users can use a Merkle proof to withdraw funds directly from the layer 1 smart contract, if for example it hasn't received a Merkle root in two days. Another issue that might happen is the layer 2 censoring someone's transactions but continuing to post Merkle routes on time, so they can't use the emergency withdraw function. For this, there will typically be another emergency function in the layer 1 smart contract that allows a user to force the layer 2 to include transactions in the next state update, otherwise the update won't be valid. These emergency functions for if the layer 2 misbehaves can vary from rollup to rollup, so may be different to how I described here. However, even with these safety measures in place, they don't address the bigger issue around what happens if the layer 2 tries to send a fake state root. This is why the layer 1 also requires some sort of proof. The proofs are the key part here which makes rollups trustworthy. There are two main types of proofs that are used, fraud proofs and zero knowledge proofs. Firstly, for optimistic rollups who use fraud proofs, when the rollup nodes post a state root to the layer 1 smart contract, they have to send a small bond with the root. The layer 1 smart contract then optimistically trusts them and updates to the new state root. However, this update doesn't become final for another 7 days. In this time, if someone else is able to create a fraud proof where they prove that the state root is fraudulent, it will be reverted and the person who reported it will receive the bond as a reward. As long as there's one honest person trying to create these fraud proofs, then everyone's funds should be safe. However, in order to create a fraud proof, you need to be able to verify all the transactions that happened in the state root change, including that their signatures are valid. 
This means optimistic rollups have to post all the transactions that happened in the state change to the layer 1 as well. Using compression techniques, they can reduce the amount of data needed to verify the transactions massively, but it's still more than just needing to post the state changes. The other type of rollup is zero knowledge rollups. Zero knowledge proofs are a relatively new form of cryptography where a user is able to create a proof that they have correctly completed a task without having to give any information about the task. One of the more well known examples of a ZK proof is the cave door analogy. If we create a scenario where there is a circular cave with only one entrance, and at the back of the cave there is a door which requires a password to unlock, I can prove that I know the password to the door by simply going in one end of the cave and exiting from the other. I have proven that I know a piece of information without giving away any of the information. Each zero knowledge proof requires creating some sort of scenario where there is an interaction like this, which can require quite a bit of processing power to create them. So for ZK rollups, the layer 2 will produce a zero knowledge proof that it has correctly taken the previous state, processed some valid transactions, and produced a new state route after these state changes. If they were to attempt to do anything fraudulent, they wouldn't be able to produce a valid ZK proof, so the layer 1 smart contract wouldn't accept the new state route that they are posting. This means ZK rollups don't need to post all the transaction and signature data to the layer 1 like optimistic rollups, as they shouldn't be able to fake anything. They do still need to post enough data for users to create Merkle proofs for the emergency functions described earlier, but this is less than the transaction and signature data. The big advantage of ZK rollups is that the state updates are settled instantly once the zero knowledge proof has been verified, so no need to wait 7 days like optimistic rollups. This is why many people think ZK rollups will be the future once more efficient methods to produce them are found. Currently they are still difficult to work with and can take a long time to produce for more general computation, so optimistic rollups are more flexible today. I'm not going to talk much about the actual layer 2s in this video, as they can vary wildly and be anything. The layer 2 could be some random guy living atop a mountain who only accepts transactions via handwritten notes, or it could be a supercomputer capable of processing trillions of transactions per second. The only thing that matters is that they are able to post a state route, along with a proof, and enough data for users to create Merkle proofs. You can just look at them as a black box where users send their transactions and they produce new state routes. Because they can be anything, this does bring the opportunity for them to run different virtual machines to the layer 1, so different programming language can be used. You need to look at each rollup individually to see what they are capable of, and how they work, as they can have almost as much flexibility as running a separate layer 1 chain. As with everything, there are downsides to rollups. Whilst rollups can potentially be just as secure as using the layer 1, it depends on how they are designed. There's a great website called L2Beat, which assesses the risks of different rollups running on Ethereum. Link is in the description if you want to check it out. As you can see, currently almost all the rollups have at least one potential risk, and so with today's rollups, there is an increased risk in using them compared to just using the layer 1. Secondly, when you use a rollup, you're leaving it up to the people running the rollup to order your transactions. If you are buying things on a DEX for example, the people running the rollup nodes have the ability to front run your transaction. Different rollups will have different methods of ordering transactions, some will be fairer and more decentralised than others. And thirdly, funds in the rollup can only interact with other funds in the rollup. This means the ecosystem will be split up. Each rollup will basically act as its own ecosystem. Some people are working on shared liquidity between chains, so this may be less of an issue in the future. Also, as with all software, there is always the chance of bugs. To summarise, rollups are simply a smart contract where people send their funds and the entire state of all the funds in the smart contract are represented by a Merkle root. The only processing the layer 1 cryptocurrency needs to do to manage the funds is to update the Merkle root whenever it receives a new one from the layer 2, along with checking the proof provided is valid. The layer 2 will also send a bunch of extra data to the layer 1, but the layer 1 doesn't need to process this data and just needs to make sure it's available to users, as it's important data for users to be able to prove their funds in emergencies if the layer 2 goes offline. The layer 2 does all the processing for funds in the smart contract, and can be run on completely centralised high powered nodes capable of processing thousands of transactions per second, as there are enough checks in place so that they can't do anything malicious with the funds. Whilst this is the theory that makes rollups extremely secure, it's still early and there are currently risks with using them, however if they are built right, it's clear that they will be an extremely useful tool and will be a huge part of the cryptocurrency ecosystem in the future in order to provide cheaper transactions for everyone. If you enjoyed the video please leave a like and subscribe if you want to catch my future content.